Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. I am very delighted to have Dr. Arjun Pai Ji with us. Pai, sir, please uh, accept my greetings and pranams. Long time. Finally, we meet again. And I am yes. amazed every day by seeing the comments uh, in the video that we did like four or five years back. <laughs> there are people still commenting there that please bring back Pai, sir. And Finally, today we are together and uh, today we are going to discuss something very important uh, which is known as Trivagi Dasha which can be used for uh, getting to know about life events, you know, uh, when certain things can happen. So we will divide this presentation into two parts. Uh, the first part will be where Paisar will uh, tell us what is Trivagi Dasha, how you can use it, what are the importances, the nuances. And in the second part, which we will again upload after some time, you will see how we use this for different examples to predict different things like, you know, your marriage, your career, you know, certain things like he was telling me, you know, uh, when, when somebody will drop out of a university or there will be massive transformation. So all events will come in that part two session. So, uh, Pai sir, please welcome and the stage is yours. <laughs> Namaskar, Bravo, Bajit. And, um, you know, I'm so honored to be back on your channel. I know um, the last time we did uh, the session, again, I feel whenever I come here, there is a lot of blessings. The stage and the platform that you give uh, all, you know, people who come as panelists and people who come to participate, they bring out the best. I think it is your aura and energy that you bring the best out of uh, the guests that come and honor your channel. So great to be back. Now, um, you asked me, can I um, discuss something about the Tribhagi Dasha? Now, the word Tribhagi is something that I had coined this name because I didn't know what was this Dasha called. It was called, it was based on, I'll tell you the background also. I learned this uh, Dasha system which is originally from the Brigunadi concepts. Mm -hmm. And I learned it from uh, Professor A.V. Sundaram, late Professor A.V. Sundaram G. And he's also written in his book as well. Uh, but many people didn't even pick this up. Okay. So there are so many fantastic nuggets that you can get from timing of events from this Dasha system. So firstly, it is attributed to Brigurishi, so Brigunadi. It's a Nadi principle. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I also would like to, you know, honor late uh, Professor A.V. Sundaramji because he brought it to my knowledge. And then I started testing it. I have presented this on um, KRS channel, Kapil Raj's channel as well, five, six years ago. I don't remember. Then I have seen this work very uh, fantastically. And that's why I would say this is one of the best kept, uh, you know, artillery in my armor what is there, you know. I keep this as a very fantastic way I can uh, look at things. Now, why did I call it as uh, Tribhagi? Tribhagi is, there is also another name called uh, Tribhagi. Even when you are using Vimshoti Dasha system, there is a Tribhagi variation that you can do. If you can, I will show it when you are using uh, Jagannath Hura by PBR Narsim Rao, his software, which is freely available. So you can see there is a variation called Tribhagi variation. It's not the same thing. It's slightly different. Now, later on, I coined, uh, you know, another astrologer, famous astrologer. When I discussed this with him, he coined a name Sundari. He said it's three bhagi sundari, which means he said sundari means it's like a fantastic, beautiful technique that works uh, like cheese. Okay. <laughs> now let me go to the basics of this, for which you have to know that Udu Dashas, Udu Dashas means nakshatra based Dashas. Vimshotri is a very popular nakshatra based Dasha system. And Parashar Rishi in Bharat Parashara Hora Shastra, he has very clearly mentioned that this can be used for all charts. Okay, of course, he has given certain conditional dashas as well, uh, where um, you can use them. 
Nobody said Vimsho 3 can be used universally. Vimsho 3, the word means 120 years. Hmm. So these are Voodoo Dashas. Now, what this system will help us to understand of Dasha is using Vimsho 3 Dasha system, which is a Nakshatra based Dasha, we will be making predictions like a Rashi based Dasha of the Nakshatra based Dasha system. Okay. So there are two different systems, right? Rashi and Nakshatra based Dashas. Correct. Okay, like Chara Dasha is a Rashi based Dasha. Yes, yes. Right? So Nakshatra based Dashas are like you have the Yogini Dasha, Kal Chakra Dasha, yes. Ashtotari Dasha, Vimshotri Dasha. So, so using Vimshotri, which because it is used by most prominent astrologers, everybody uses Vimshotri for sure with using other Dasha system. Now, let us go to why we have to use the Vimshotri because it is 120 years. Okay, and the dashas are based on nakshatras. So how many nakshatras do we have? In the Jataka based astrology, we have 28 nakshatra scheme. Mm -hmm. When you go into Horari and Prashna, we add one more, which is Abhijit, which becomes 28. The intercalary nakshatra, Abhijit is also included. But we are fixing here for Jataka based astrology, uh, or, you know, um, horoscopy, we say 27 nakshatra. Correct, correct. And we have nine planets. Navagrahas. So the equation is if you have to attribute everything to the Navagrahas, so Nakshatras are also divided into Navagrahas. See, if you look at the Panchanga system also, Pancha Anga, the five limbs, in that also you will see the quality of time can be assessed through the Panchanga. Even in the Panchanga, you see Vara is also the weekday. Yeah. We also are based on the the, the Navagrahas itself. Right. Okay, actually, seven grahas are used for the weekday, seven weekday lords. Right. When you look at uh, Tithi, Tithis are also lunar days. They are also, we can classify them on the basis of Navagrahas. Where, when you are doing the classification on Tithis, we are eliminating Ketu there. Only the eight grahas are used. See, Vara, we use seven grahas. Tithis we use eight grahas. Rahu is included, Ketu is not included. Correct. Nakshatras, we are using all nine grahas. Yes. In the classification. Understood. Yes. So that is why nakshatras, if you divide it, you will get in the entire scheme of nakshatras, 27 nakshatras and nine navagrahas. So we have three nakshatras which are associated with one navagraha. So Correct. each Navadra has three nakshatras. Correct. Three times nine. So three. So this system has evolved from saying for which you will have to understand Babajit that it is like you go to your gym. You might have a, a compartment where you keep your stuff when you go and go to the gym. So the compartment will have a key and a lock. And there is a number. You remember the number. Yeah. I not remember, you know, where. And the key also has a number on it, isn't it? Correct. Your locker facility, when you go to the gym or you go to a swimming pool or anywhere, you have a locker facility, you have a number. Correct. Number is what you remember. You don't even know which box out of those, you know, 20, 25 boxes is where you have kept. You will remember the number. You look at the number. You'll map it and you'll open it. What content is inside your locker only you know. You do not know what is inside the other lockers. Correct. So imagine that there are nine lockers and there are nine numbers. What is inside each of those lockers only the numbers will know because number key can open it up and you can see. Mm. So those locker which is inside the content what is there is the nakshatra. Ah, okay. And the number is like the Navagraha. Hmm. So the Navagraha can identify and open it. And what is inside is the Nakshatra is giving you the result. Right. This is very clear. What are you understanding? Right. So our karmic imprints, our karmic associations, or whatever we have had, what we call as Vasanas, are sitting inside each of these lockers. The identifier for that locker is a Navagraha. So, 
the dasha based system which is based on the nakshatras we are associating them with the navagrahas so the navagraha the mahadasha lord let me say yeah. is the key to that locker Correct. And the contents which is sitting inside the locker is the nakshatras. Hmm. So the karmic seeds. So imagine another example. I am giving another analogy. The navandrahas are the farmers which plow the fields of consciousness. Okay. And the seeds which are sitting inside the earth when you are plowing, yeah. some seeds come up and they are ready to germinate. That is your prarabdha karma. I see. Is that is that understood? So, if the seeds are very deep inside, they will not come up. Yes. But those seeds which have come up to the surface when you are flowing the field. What will happen? It will come up, and then if you water it, it will start germinating, and it will become a a crop. Correct. So the farmer is the navagrahas. The fields of consciousness under which the seeds are are the nakshatras. The fields of consciousness. So the dynamic motion of the Navagrahas is plowing the fields of karmic consciousness and the prarabdha seeds which are sitting, which are ripe for getting the fruits come up and they give you the fruits. So if you have to understand, then you have to understand what the nakshatras are. Correct. Because they are linked to the Mahadasa. So, so this system is a very very important system but for that to understand let me also now tell you because i told you this system is also linked with deciphering it from the rashi based system so generally what we do shodri dasha sistri take the mahadasha lord the antar dasha lord the pratyantar dasha lord we take and we look at their interplay which is there in the chart to make predictions correct Correct. Right. So, and then we also look at the lordship of the houses that they rule in the chart to say, okay, this event will happen. Well, marriage will happen because, you know, seventh house lord is activating and blah, 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 all of this way. Career, tenth lord. Right. So that, that is it. Now, if this system is using nakshatra based and the locker and the key facility and identifying a particular locker is like a bhava. Oh, the fifth locker yeah. is number seven. Okay. It's a fifth compartment, but it is number seven is identified. So mm -hmm. we are understanding the bhava also. So that is what this dasha system is going to give us. So for which you will have to know the Rashi also, because this is a Rashi based system, Bhava based system and Nakshatra based system all combined together combined. inside the Vimshotri. Okay, yes, that makes sense. All the three combined, yes. Now I'll, I'll tell you that first very basic preliminary thing about the Rashi based system. We all know that Rashis are, there are 12 Rashis. Each Rashi is classified based on the mode of operation. Every Rashi has a mode of operation. What is the mode of operation? Certain Rashis are called as Chara Rashis, which means they are mobile signs. They are called as cardinal signs. Correct. Okay. Then there are certain Rashis, their mode of operation is called as Thira or they are called as fixed. And then the third mode is, you know, Dvi Swabhava or it is called as mutable or dual signs. Hmm. Correct. For them to understand, you have to know that each of these signs on their mode of operations are connected to the three murtis, which is the trinity. Correct. So, all the movable signs, which we call them the cardinal signs, or we say they are chara rashis, are like Brahma because they have rajas guna in them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rajasik. Rajas means action, action. guna. The Oh. So, everything has to start something because of the state of motion or momentum or triggering. Then your cardinal signs have to be active. Even in the Prashna Shastra, if the cardinal signs are rising when the, the querent is asking a question, oh, will my work happen if yeah. cardinal signs are rising? Then you can say yes. Oh, yes. So, the best cardinal yes. sign is, which is the best cardinal sign Aries? It's the starting point. So, it is the initiator. 
It's initiation, the first correct. house. Correct, correct. So beginning point. Right? So all movable signs are Brahma and they are Rajasic in nature. But there is also a secret which is embedded within the Rashis to also understand the remediations as well. Because movable signs will be connected to Dhatu. Brahat Prashara Aura Shastra also says Dhatu means the mineral and metal kingdom. I'll show that in the slide for you so that for the people it will be much easier to understand what I'm trying to say here. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see this? Yes, yes. So, yes. movable science, Rajasik Guna, that is Brahma. Okay, Dhatu, mineral kingdom, metals and mineral kingdom is movable science. They are called the entrances to the chart. Movable signs are entrances. They are like door openers for you. So if you are feeling stuck that you are not able to, you know, any activity of your life, you are not getting a job, you are not uh, getting married, you need to open doors. So yes. which Rashi's open doors for you? Movable signs will open doors. Yes. Yes. Okay. And they are connected to the present. Brahma is always about the present state of mind, present conditions. Okay. Okay. And what does they rule? They rule the rules and regulations. So Brahma sets certain rules and regulations you cannot alter. So mobile science people are always rule oriented or they have to be rule oriented if they go against the grain or regulations or natural laws, cosmic laws. You follow the cosmic laws. Second is dual signs, what we call as the Sattva Guna is there. So Vishnu, they are connected to Vishnu. Mm -hmm. And they are connected to Jiva, which means animal kingdom. All dual signs are connected to Jiva. If dual signs are activated during this Tribhagi Dasha system, then your remedies have to be to the animal kingdom, which could be animal kingdom is what we have birds, we have quadrupeds and we have bipeds. Isn't it? Quadrupeds are like four-legged animals. Bipeds are like apes and human beings. Yes. yes. So, and birds. They are also, you know, two-legged, but they can fly. So, animal kingdom, they are like sitting inside a garba, which means they are sitting like inside the womb. Vishnu is, you know, Brahma is inside a womb. It's called as Hiranya Garba. Yes. Hiranya means the yes. golden womb. Correct. And dual signs are connected to your past. Okay. And they bring in balance, practicality and diplomacy. Because Vishnu has to be diplomatic. He has to be the maintainer. So he has to be very practical, balanced and diplomacy has to be there. Correct. Even when Brigurushi came and kicked him on his chest, Vishnu didn't flare up. He fell at his feet and he said, sorry, I hope your feet is not hurt because of you kicking me on my chest and what did he do? He removed the third, the eye, egoistic eye which was there below Brigurishi's feet. Okay. That is the diplomacy. Brigurishi's one eye. So all Brigu, Brigu means the lineage of Shukra is coming from Brigu. They are called as Bhargava, Parusharama, yeah. Shukracharya. They are all Brigu's clan. All of them, if Venus is afflicted in your chart, you will have one eye problem. One eye is defective. One eye is, you know, Venus afflicted by Saturn, Mars, Rahu, Ketu. So you will have one eye problem will be there because Shukracharya is also one eye giant. He's a Acharya with one eye only. Correct. Pirates also usually are one eye. So fixed signs, Tamoguna, Shiva, they belong to the plant kingdom. What is the best thing that you can offer to Shiva is the leaves of Bel Patra, Bilva. That is his most favorite. Or you can give him anything which is poisonous or which grows in the wilderness, wild. Which means you give him datura, you give him, you know, uh, hemp, they say bhang and other things. Why they give him? Because he is from the plant kingdom. He is a healer. That's why he's called as Vaidyanath as well. So if you need healing therapies, then you have to go to fix signs. You have to take the plants which grow, certain rare plants which grow. And that's why they are connected to your future. Because ailing and healing 
This is the sign where you have to surrender, you have to dissolve, you have to forgive, you have to forget. These are the signs which are the most difficult to heal. So did you understand why I'm saying in the three bhagi, first you have to know, I'll tell you the concepts of three bhagi, but before that understand when an activation is happening of a particular sign, you, ha you have to know what remediations have to be done or what healing has to be done, what attitude you have to take to heal them, you have to use these, this table. And you will know through this also where is the, uh, the trigger for that event is coming. Is it something which is going to have a bearing in the future? Is it something which is coming because of the bearing on the past? Or is it something going to have a bearing on the future, uh, the present? Okay. So is this understood? The Rashi-based system is understood? Yeah, yeah. Then I will go to the... Yeah, yeah. I want to ask one question here. Maybe you will sure. always say this later, but I get a question sure. in my mind. So, for example, the movable signs, as you said, they are Brahma, represented by Brahma, and there you need to follow the regulations. Rules, regulations, yeah. laws, cosmic laws, not yeah. necessarily all human-made laws. Human-made laws, traffic light system is a human-made law. That is not what. You have to follow the laws of uh, the cosmos or the universe. Universe yes, 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 correct. So then now, you know, uh, imagine if somebody is, you know, ADC is activated, for example. So then if there are some problems that the person is facing in the Dasha, so does it mean that the person has not followed some law because of that it has happened? If there is affliction of multiple aff afflictions of the malefics or stringent planets on that, it is showing that you have... A not followed the laws and regulations, which means, for example, what is a natural law? We should not hurt any other animal, right? Yeah. Or we should not go and cut a tree or something unnecessarily. Hurting any other creature, that's a cosmic law. Correct. But many, many of us do it, right? Without our knowledge. Correct. So by doing that, we are creating a law-based disruption because who has the right to take the life or give life, only God has the right to take. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We cannot, you know, impose whose life has to be taken or not. That is the principle. So that means there is a break of law that has happened. Correct, correct. Okay. That, that makes so sense. that law, that law, what we are saying, in Sanskrit is termed, given a name called as dharma. Correct. See, that there is a difference, stark difference between dharma and karma. See, somebody is met with an accident on the street. Yeah. You see it. It is not your karma to go and help. It is your dharma to go and help. You know what is dharma? Somebody has fallen and hurt and is bleeding. Yeah. At least what you can do is you can call the ambulance. You can call the, you know, the emergency services. You can go and see if you can pull the person out from the thing or you're going to, if you feel that no, you're feeling more, you can get more people help, you know, paramedics can come. So that is your dharma. How can you say it is your karma? Correct. Karma is different, dharma is different. So the rules and regulations I'm saying is dharmic, dharma, the rules of dharma. Correct. Which dharma, are artha, karma, moksha. Universal. Or any religion, any tradition, caste, creed. Correct. Matter. It's universal. Correct. 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 Universal. Great. Please continue. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? We I can answer that and then we can proceed with uh, the, yeah. the principles of the Bible. This was my question. So you said if uh, the Rashi is Aries, which is activated and there are like, for example, if Mars and Saturn are aspecting Aries, so then it shows you have broken some rule and because of that, there is a problem. And uh, in one of them, you said, you know, it was uh, something to do with past and future. So if a past uh, indicating Rashi is afflicted or a future one, so does it mean you will break the rule in future or uh, like... No. See, basically what I'm trying to say, Babajit, is you will get so many instances even in this life. Say, now Saturn and Mars is aspecting Aries. Yeah. Aries is Brahma and I said it is present, yeah. which means... Life will throw you so many incidents in this life also to rectify what you have undone. So it will give you some 
uh, tasks and events of your life where you would be in a dilemma whether should i do the dharma or not to do if you are not doing the dharma again you are making the same mistakes Oh, so you, the identification of jyotish is to identify and creating awareness that i have created these mistakes see mistake everybody will do mistakes and will have to understand so what is the sign the science is of, of self awareness it's a science of creation of self awareness it is not to pinpoint you have made mistakes or you have done so very good karmas that is not the point of jyotish hmm it is point of jyotish is self correction hmm got it awareness creation and you know honoring that understanding and respecting ha i might have made a mistake now i should not make the same mistake again in this life hmm correct that is why there are certain rules and certain kings are said to be in a state where they are completely in a mode of what to follow because a king has to follow the rules and regulations of the land you know yata raja tata praja which means as good as the king so is the ah. the kingdom yes yes so the word is called as dharma sankat have you heard of this word you can also be in dharma sankat many a times yeah. sankat means what whether to act or not to act correct that is like acting also has certain repercussions and not acting is against the dharma so that is what the dharma sankat is called so you will be put into many such dharma sankat when you have a malefic aspecting aries okay. okay sometimes sometimes baba ji they say even the right decision taken at the wrong time doesn't become right correct correct sometimes we take decisions but it is too delayed to take the decisions too late <laughs> too late that is what even mahabharat is also identifying and telling us mm. the king literally you have given the say dhritarashtra is a blind what is blind which means i believe as an analogy he might not have been blind he might have eyesight let us assume analogy i'm just taking metaphorically he is seeing some things which are being done which is wrong and he is still not speaking that yeah. is as good as saying he is blind yeah, he is a yeah. blind king yes metaphor it is elagar which means his sons are doing something wrong and he is still not speaking up how can a king not speak up when there is adharma happening in front of him so in one Uh, I think you are frozen. Okay. Yeah. Can can you hear me now? Yeah, you are. We lost you. Are you said how can a king be mum when adharma is going on? Adharma is going on. So, in one way, Vedavyas Rishi has coined Dhritarashtra as being blind, which means even if he had eyesight and he seeing everything, he is still not speaking about it. yeah his own sons are creating something which is wrong so what is the meaning see understand the hidden meaning of the names of the mahabharata the kauravas one is what is his name of the the most important kaurava who is dur <laughs> duryodhan ha huh. you know duryodhan and dushasan dushasan means misgovernance और दुर्योधन मींस जो दुर्योग करे अपना पोजीशन का पावर ही इज मिस यूजिंग हिज पावर इज दुर्योधन दुष शासन शासन मींस रूल मिस रूलिंग करेक्ट सो दे हैव बीन गिवन नेम्स धृतराष्ट्र इज ब्लाइंड बिकॉज़ ही इज सी इवन इफ ही इज सीइंग ही इज नॉट स्पीकिंग इवन इफ ही इज हियरिंग ही इज नॉट मेकिंग एनी इन इज नॉट स्पीकिंग ही इज नॉट डम यस is not dumb he is blind a dumb king you can say okay he cannot speak that's why he is not saying anything a blind king can still hear but he can speak why is he not speaking up yeah yeah yes so that is a dharma beautiful yes makes sense anyway 
So did you understand the concepts of uh, this? Why I'm saying that is, that is what where you have to latch on to. See, okay. when you look at uh, Tribhagi Dasha, you have to decipher what Rashi is activated. Hmm. So there we will so use there. these traits. Yes. Hmm. Makes sense. Then Makes sense. the next concept, point number two, of the sequencing of the Dasha. I'll come to the rules of Tribhagi, but understand the sequencing. See, life always begins with the movable sign. Yes. Yes. So the movable signs will be the first part of the dasha. Then life goes into the middle part, which is the dual sign, or what we call as the mutable signs. This is Swabhava Rashi. And finally, because we have to go into our graveyard, okay. we have to go into our graveyard and be still there yeah. for life. That is Stira Rashi. So the end part of our life, Stira Rashi, beginning part movable, middle part is, some part is movable, some part is still. So it is like how our progression life, initial part of our life, we are so energetic, we want to go to work, we want to keep two jobs, we want to work, you know, 12, 15 hours a day, then we'll come to midlife crisis, that is the dual sign. What is midlife? Sometimes you work, some days you want to work, some days you feel don't like working, then you are, so you go into that semi mode, isn't it? When okay. you come towards the middle of your life, you cannot be so active as you are before. And then you go to retirement, Stira Rashi. Hmm. So, Brahmacharya, then what we have? Grahastha. Okay. Then Vanaprastha. Grahastha and Vanaprastha is like dual signs. Correct. Sometimes you are working, sometimes you are not, half and half. And then Sanyas is like Stira Rashis. Correct. So understand the flow. Always it has to be movable, then it is dual, then Great. it is fixed. Great. Okay. 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 Excellent. Now, okay. Now we have understood the Rashi concept. Let's go to the nakshatra of the three bhagi. Like I said, there are 27 nakshatras mm -hmm. and there are nine navagrahas. So we have there are three nakshatras. Every graha yes. for each graha, every graha has three nakshatras which are associated. Why don't say they are ruling? See, the word has to be very carefully chosen in Jyotish also. I always word associated with the Navadras because you don't say a rule. Why you don't say rule? You know why? Because it's kind of a blasphemy of saying when you have the nakshatras have a nakshatra which means there are deities which are actually rulers. How can you say the Navagras are going to rule over them? Hmm. Okay. Never use the word ruling. See, why I'll tell you also. See, we have three layers in the Jyotish, Jyotisha astronomy. The first layer is our Bhu Chakra, which is Bha Chakra also we say, which is the earth. The earth is divided into 12 compartments or 12 houses or bhavas. Bhava means our emotions. The emotions are on the earth plane. Bhava is attached to the earth plane. Understood? Next layer, Bhavajit, is where the solar system is. What we say, it is the, the chakra where it is the nakshat, uh, the, the mandala where we have the planets which are rotating. That is actually called the Bhachakra, isn't it? So it's a mid heaven. Hmm. That is where you can say the planets are associated with the Navagrahas. Yeah. See, people say sun, but we should not say sun is the ruler because the deity which rules sun, see, sun is the celestial body. Who is ruling the sun? We have to call him Ravi, Surya, Ravi. Devata. They are the Devatas. Yes. Sun is yes. not the Devata. Yes. He interchangeably yes. use. Why we say sun? Because it's a celestial object. Sun to see every, every day. But who is the divinity which is there within the sun? It is Surya, Ravi, Bhaskara, right. Chandra, Soma is the Devata. Moon is a celestial body. Yes. So that is that layer you can say yes. Huh. Sun, 
is associated with Surya, Moon with Chandra, you know, then you have Kuja or Angaraka or Mangala, we say, Mars. So there the association is perfect. When you are going above them, nakshatras are sitting in the heavens, not in the mid heavens. So who rules in the heavens? It is the devatas who are in the heavens are ruling the heavens. Hmm. How can one layer below rule that? So hmm. it is like you are saying, the senior manager or the vice president is uh, taking all the decisions in a company. No, there is a CEO. Okay. So the CEO is taking the decision. The CEO is sitting in the heavens. So hmm. the nakshatra patis are sitting in the heavens. So how can the navagrahas rule over the heavens? They cannot rule over the heavens. Heavens are ruled by the devatas there. Who are the devatas? We know. We have seen the nakshatra, Ashwini Kumaras, we have Yama, we have you know Agni. So for each of the nakshatras, they are the real rulers. Makes sense. Isn't this? So I am saying associated. So these are associated. So when we look at the Vimshotri Dasha, which is 120 years, we divide it into three parts: 40, 40, 40. So first part, 140 years is ruled by one nakshatra. Next 40 years is ruled by another nakshatra, third. So take a Vimshotri Dasha period, which has been defined. Mm -hmm. Divide it into three parts. See, I have talked so much to come to the nitty-gritties of the calculations. Why? Because you have to understand the classification. So there also you say the first set of nine nakshatras, which is from Achvini, to Achlesha is Brahma. Okay. And Brahma so Trimoti. Huh. The next set from Magha to Jeshta is Vishnu. And then the last set from Mula to Revati Nakshatra is Shiva. Trimurti. Hmm. Correct. Correct. Okay. This also you need to know. So that means your zodiac sign also 27 nakshatras are divided into the trinity. Right. So let us take the classification of three bhagi, which means you're taking a dasha, dividing it into three parts, and each part is associated with one nakshatra out, out of the three nakshatras. So let us take an example. So Mars Mahadasha and Vim Shotri. Okay. Mars Mahadasha is how many years, Babajit? Seven years. Seven years. If I divide it into three parts, what will happen to each part? How how long would be each part? Roughly. Yeah. Two years, four, four months. months. Two Absolutely. Years. Two years, four months. Absolutely. Because two years, four months, two years, four months, two years, four months would be seven years totally. Yes, correct. So one part is two years, four months. So Mars Mahadasha, the first part of Mars Mahadasha will so the three, which are the three nakshatras associated with the associated with Mars in Vimshotri Dasha system? Which nakshatras are associated? We have like Mrigashira um, nakshatra. Mrigashira. Then, then Chitra. Yes, we have Chitra nakshatra, Dhanishta nakshatra. Dhanishta. Okay, these three. Now, which of Mrigashira? So look at uh, the nakshatra which is. First, let us take the nakshatra of Dhanishta. Because the first two padas of Dhanishta falls in a Chara Rashi, which is Capricorn. Yes. So that means whenever Mars Mahadasha, for anybody who Mars Mahadasha will begin, it will start with Capricorn being the Dasha, which means that Rashi will be active. Oh, I see. Okay. Chara, no? I told you. This Chara will be the first. Anybody. This is for anybody. Anybody. Any anybody. Oh. Okay. For anybody, Mars Mahadasha, the first part of the Mahadasha mm -hmm. will be starting with Capricorn. Okay. Why I will I will take another example? Why I'll come to the Mars? Just give me one minute because I want to give an easy example for some people to understand. Let us take Moons Mahadasha. Mars, I will come, I'll tell you why the complexity is there light slightly. Let's take moon. Moon's nakshatra associated. Which nakshatra is associated with moon? Yeah, so three years, four months. <clears throat> so, ah, three years, four months, three years, four months, three years, four months. So which are the nakshatras which are associated with the moon, Babajit? 
So first Rohini will be associated. No, not first Rohini. The first will be associated with Shravana because Shravana falls in a movable sign of Capricorn. What ah, did I okay. say? Okay, yes, yes, yes. Then it starts from Shravan. Correct. So Shravan will be there. <clears throat> then Hasta will be there. Then end. Ah, okay. perfect. Did you understand why? Yes, yes. Because yes. I already said the Dasha have to begin with the movable, then to the dual, then finally to stellar So yes, which means yes. what will happen? When Mah Moon Mahadasha will begin for anybody, the first three years, four months of Moon Mahadasha will be Capricorn, will be active. Yes. Rashi will be active. Yes. Okay, got it. Now we have to know from the slide I showed you what is movable signs, Brahma, Rajasik Guna. Mm. Okay, then I said it is connected to the present Mm. And I said it is connected to Dhatu or Metal Kingdom and other things. Mm. Just keep this in mind when you are yeah, yeah, yeah. understanding that. Yes. So first yes. for Moon Mahadasha, every time the Moon Mahadasha is activated, it will activate Capricorn. But Capricorn as a Rashi might fall in any house for that person, right? For a different yes. person, the yes. house is different Capricorn. Correct. Depending so first three years, four months. Right. Exactly. So that means the house results are also going to come. Hmm. So Rashi result is also going to come. Yeah. So then does it mean like for somebody like if Capricorn is the seventh house, for example, ah. then does it mean something related to marriage or partnerships? Absolutely. It is very good for initiating something, which means why? Because I said movable signs are good for initiating, starting something. Okay. Okay, so the first Understood. Three years, four months, three years, four months will be Capricorn. Okay. Huh. Capricorn will be active. Okay. Right? Yes. Now, two things you can see. Now, you have to see moon rules which house in that natal chart. With respect to Lagna, point number one, that also will bring the result. Okay. Seventh house, the result will also come. Yes. Because it is... You know, seventh house because you said cancer lagna. Yeah, so yeah. Correct. Cancer, Capricorn is the seventh house. Yes. Seventh yes. house. And where moon is placed with respect to Capricorn in the chart. Okay. They will give you the result. So the events will be revolving around there. Okay. If a planet is sitting in Capricorn, it will also influence the outcome of the events. Oh, that will plan. Okay. Got it. Makes sense. So then next three years, four months, it will be Virgo will be active. Yes. Because where the Asta falls in Virgo. Mm. And last three years, four months, Taurus will be active because Rohini falls in Taurus. Correct. Understood this principle is clear? Yes, absolutely. Now let's go to the example of Mars. Why I said I come back to Mars? There is a trick there. Do you understand? Because all Mars's nakshatras, Mars associated nakshatras, yeah. will yeah. rule two houses, two, yeah. two rashis. Yes. yes. So yes. we said two years, four months, two years, four months, two years, four months, correct? Yes. Baba yes. yes. But one year, two months will be first Capricorn. Next one year, two months will be Aquarius. Understood by got it. Perfect. Two padas are falling in Capricorn and two padas are falling in Aquarius. So mm. the focus house has to change after one year, two months after starting of the Mars Mahadasha. And similarly for sun related nakshatras, it will be one. And Jupiter. Yes. One fourth. Uh, and Jupiter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. One fourth in one and the three fourths in the other one. Three fourths in other. Okay, perfect. Now, if you want to make it explained in your own terms to the your audience, you can explain. But you have got the clear picture. Yeah. I hope the audiences are understanding because first pada of all sun's nakshatras fall in one sign and the next three padas fall inside the next sign. Correct. Correct. So that means, let's take sun's example. Okay. Sun's Mahadasha is for how many years, uh, Babajit? Vimshotri? Six years. So that means if I divide by three, two years, two years, two years. Yes, yes. So what will happen when Sun's Mahadasha begins? 
Sans Mahadasha will begin with which Rashi? First, it will start Sans Mahadasha. Uh, it will start uh, with a movable Rashi, so Aries. Which is Aries, absolutely right. But first six months only, Aries will be active. Oh, because yes. Because two years, quarter, quarter of two years. 18 months, and Taurus will be active. Ah, then next 18 months, Taurus will be active. Okay. Now, in this, I have a question. Now, ne next 18 months, as, as Kritika's uh, Pada 2, 3, 4 lie in Taurus, but Taurus is again ideally the last cycle, you know, the uh, fixed sign. So, but now still here after Aries, Taurus will only be active. See, this is going with the nakshatras. Actually, your is a very, very brilliant question. Then in the advanced concepts, I will take that. And that's why I want you to first, your audiences to try. Ideally, I would go with first six months with Aries. Okay. Okay. And then next one and a half years, I will go with Capricorn actually. You understood why? <laughs> Uttarashada, third, fourth, and uh, yeah. second, third, and fourth falls in Capricorn, which is the movable. Yeah, so this is uh, this is consuming two years of the movable and then well and then fixed. Okay, uh, makes sense. But for the time being, let us just fix because otherwise it will confuse people. Now you are understanding the concept because we yeah. are speaking at the mathematical level. Correct, got it. Got it. But your question is absolutely brilliant. That's why I said first six months of Sun Mahadasha, what will be active? Aries. Then the next six months will go to Capricorn. What is Capricorn? It is where the sun gets Dingbali. See, Aries is where sun gets exalted. Yeah. Kritika first father. Yeah. And then it goes to a next movable sign where sun gets Dingbali, directional strength, the natural 10th house. Ah, okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, but you got it, right? So the trick is there in these three nakshatras, associated nakshatras, which is it? Sun, Jupiter, and Mars. Okay. There you will have to juggle a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. all yeah. other nakshatras, you will find a full Rashi will be active for the entire duration. Correct, correct. Yes. 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 Is everybody... Uh, now, did you get that? So I'm just showing you one table for the advantage of your viewers mm -hmm. to understand how that will be. Now, if you really want to go to the finest level, Babajit, you can go to the finest level. I'll give you one simple tip here <laughs> for all your viewers. Ketu is seven years. Yeah. Each pada of Ketu's nakshatras will be active for seven months. Each pada of Ketu's nakshatra, which means First Ketu will always start with Aries because it will be Ashwini Nakshatra will be active because sitting in the movable sign. Yeah, yes, Aries. So, so seven months Ashwini Nakshatra first Pada will be active. Seven months Ashwini Nakshatra second Pada. Then seven months Ashwini Nakshatra third and 28 months totally because seven years is three years, four months. Yes, three yes. years, four months is 24 plus four is 28 months. Right. So this table will give you how the nakshatras and how many months that nakshatras will be active and each pada of the nakshatras will be equal to the number of years just take so jupiter is 16 years mm -hmm. so each pada of jupiter's nakshatra will be active for 16 months okay that's interesting okay moon is for 10 years so ah. each pada of a moon's nakshatra each pada will be active for 10 months yeah okay if you want to look. Okay, okay. This this is interesting. Interesting, right? Yeah. And one question so, I have sure, here. Sure. So ask me. Now for Ketu and Moon related nakshatras, it is yeah. entirely in one sign. So for Ketu one first, sign. for Ketu first, Ashwini is active because it's in active. Now within now then within now first uh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah. within within now because all the four padas are in Aries. So, is there any change of results or flavor in these four padas or is it all the same? Yes. No, there will be change. That's why I will take this to the... This is like now you are asking me questions to take to the next level. Now, <laughs> okay. I'll give you a hint so that you'll understand. So, 
let's take ketu first ketu will activate of the first two years four months will activate aries yeah next two years four months it will activate sagittarius because mula nakshatra falls in sagittarius it's a dual sign all right correct third it will activate leo because magha nakshatra ketu falls there okay yes yes now we know that when first two years four months what will be active the first pada will be active for first seven months yes of yes of ashwini nakshatra correct 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 now go to the navamsha and see in aries navamsha is there a planet sitting in the navamsha that will also influence the event that is happening in the first seven months oh I you see. understood why because ashwini nakshatra first pada is corresponding with aries navamsha ashwini nakshatra second pada is corresponding with the taurus navamsha ashwini nakshatra third pada is corresponding with gemini navamsha ashwini nakshatra fourth pada is corresponding with cancer navamsha correct so what graha is sitting in the navamsha will also show you the bhagya that you will receive or not receive okay interesting but i didn't want to complicate you ask me this question that's why i'm telling you so that means you're pulling out some more secrets of this dasha system from me by asking some very intelligent questions <laughs> okay but this is interesting like 7 years 7 months 20 years 20 months in maps yeah. correct so this is the secret that's what i'm saying uh, that's why this dasha is a so prudent dasha that it will work like cheese if you understand so it's a nakshatra based dasha hmm. vimshotri but we are trying to take the flavor of the rashi and the bhava also out of this dasha correct 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 makes sense does it make sense yeah it it does perfectly <laughs> okay now i'm bringing in the navatara angle this is the last and the final thing that you have to understand because our rishis and munis have said the results are going to be dictated mm -hmm. and ordained by what is held in the akashic records which means what we call them as etheric archives mm -hmm. what is akashic records everything that has been done your sanchita karma is residing somewhere yeah in the ether yes like a file it has been registered and kept all files we are not going to retrieve only yeah. whatever the prarabdha is we are retrieving only those files yes now whether this file is going to influence come because of the actions you are going to do in the present is that actions that you are doing is going to have an influence on the future mm. or the actions we are doing is the files we have picked up from the past ah uh, okay this is the dasha itself is going to tell you whether you are going to have an influence what you're picking up fresh file now how do you know i'm picking up a fresh file which is not from the past or if i'm picking up a file which has a bearing on the future okay. which means if i do some activities today it will have an influence on the future karmas oh, okay or if i'm doing something it will give me results in this this phase itself or if i'm picking up a file which is from a previous file old you know yeah A.V. Sundaram Ji used to say a very beautiful uh, way. He used to put an analogy. He used to say, when income tax raid happens, IT raid. Yeah. If your logbook and your files and your balance sheet is clean, they will come and they'll go back because there is yeah. nothing they find. Yes. If there are irregularities, what will happen? They will put penalties on you. Hmm. Correct. So the irregularities we are creating. in our balance sheets yeah of our karmic balance sheets but if we know if we are going to create a balance sheet which is fresh karma are we creating or is it something from the past that is influencing us or something that will have a bearing in the future which means if i do something something in my future generations or in my future of this life will influence me hmm so who will dictate that it is the moon the natal moon janma nakshatra okay 
Okay. Okay, moon. Understood. Moon. Yes. That is why our, you know, our seers, our rishis and munis are given immense focus on the Janma Nakshatra. They say that is the kingpin because he is holding all the archives. Yes. Now it Itarika. makes more sense. Yes. yes. That's why they say connected to the manas. Manas means what? The files are not coming directly into your body. It is coming through your mind. And that mind will make you do those actions. So yes. the file, it is like a hard disk drive. And what is the hard disk drive? The chip is inserted. And you are from the software industry, IT industry. You understand at least the way. There is something in the computing world which is called as random access memory and read-only memory. ROM and RAM. You know that, right? Correct. And there is a CPU. Central Processing Unit. These are the basics that we have learned. Yeah, yeah. So this is the CPU. Central Processing Unit. Certain fi files are read-only memory, which means that has come from the past. That mm. is the imprints, karmic imprints. We cannot alter this. If it is read-only memory, we cannot alter it. But Correct. random access memory, we can go and we can yeah. change. Yes, 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 yes. So your past is read-only memory. Right. And your present and the future is random access memory. I can go and make some remedies and I can change it. I can alter the files. Read only memory. I cannot change, which means it's prarabdha karma. Correct. Okay. Now, how do you see that during the dasha? And this technique, this is again a nagi technique. So from your janma nakshatra, wherever your janma nakshatra is, yes, Nine nakshatras which follow it, including that nakshatra, is called as janma, which means it is controlling everything in the present. Okay. Which means whatever actions I'm doing, those nakshatras will give me fruits in that period. That is where we start our counting of our nakshatras, isn't it? From the moon, we start with our Vimshotri Dasha. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So that is the 120 years that you will see in the first set of nine. Then the next set of nine, which means from 10th nakshatra to 18th nakshatra is called as Dvi Janma or Anu Janma. Anu means which comes next future. Okay. Correct. Right. And the last set of nine, that is from the uh, 19th nakshatra to the 27th nakshatra, is called as three janma, which is connected to your past. Correct. From your janma nakshatra only, from your natal moon. So, in this activation theory, you will be able to see whether the person or the event that is happening is coming from the past. Like sometimes when you activate, marriage happens. Yeah. Is this a contract which is a fresh contract which has been signed in this life? Okay. Or is it a contract that you have had with that person from a previous life? Oh, interesting. Makes sense. Yes. Yes. Did you understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? Sometimes they say, right, I think I have known my soul partner yeah. from so many. We say soul connection is there, twin flames, all of this twin yeah. flame concept is not there in yes. Vedic astrology, but in the Western astrology, they say twin flame. Oh, this is like, I know this person for so long. We hit it off so very well. That is means it's a past. That means the energies are coming from the last set of nine nakshatras. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Let me give you just an example and then we'll go. We can do the second part where I'm talking about some live other examples. But yeah. I'll just give you a hint. Let us take the moon's nakshatra. Okay. I'll give you a simple chart. Let us memorize this chart. Simple. Let us say the Lagna is Dhanur Lagna, which means Sagittarius Ascent. Dhanur Lagna. Person. Let us say Moon <coughs> Moon is sitting in Kritika Nakshatra. Okay. Or let us say Bharani Nakshatra. Let us say Bharani. Okay. Dhanur Lagna, Bharani Moon. Mm -hmm. Fifth Bharani house. Bharani Moon will, yeah, in the fifth house. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Now this person's moon dasha, mahadasha, vimshotri mahadasha has begun. Okay, let's so see. first tell me the first three years, four months of this moon mahadasha for this NATO who is a Dhanur Lagna, ascendant is Sagittarius, moon is in Aries in Bharani Nakshatra. Which Rashi will be active for the first three years, four months, Babaji? So, if you go by the standard way, then Shravan should be active, which is the second house. Absolutely, correct. Okay, so now the first focus is second house. Perfect. What is the next house that will be active? Then the 10th house will be active. Perfect. 10th house will be active, which is Virgo. Yes. Where there is Hasta Nakshatra. Correct. Hasta Nakshatra. And then the 6th house will be active, which is Rohini, which is Taurus. Correct? And Taurus. Yes. Yes. So, first thing, what do you know? It is activating the Artha Trikona houses for this native in the moon's Dasha. Okay. 2, 6, 10. So for the entire 10 years, the Artha Trikon is active. Okay. Active. Okay. Super. Perfect. Super. Mm. Okay. Now, with the moon being in Bharani, what did I say? The first nine from Nakshatras from there, from Bharani, will be influencing the present. Okay. Correct? That's what I said. Correct. That means... When will Taurus be active? In the third phase, it will be active. Third phase, yes. Three years, four months. Uh, yeah, that yes. means in the last three years, four months, the person's activities or people who come into their life in the third phase of the Moon yeah. Mahadasha will be influencing the present of their life, which means whatever they're doing, they're earning because of their efforts then and there, they're earning that. Okay. Did you get it? Yes, yes. Got it. Got it. Okay. Then the first phase, three years, four months, what moon is in Bharani Nakshatra? Okay. So what will be activating when it comes to Shravana, which is Capricorn? It is the last phase, which means Anything that is coming from the past, which means if a, if you get a partner in the first phase of the moon Mahadasha, the yeah. partner has come from your past. Oh, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Why? Because Barani is in Aries, last four Rashis are connected to the past because nine nakshatras fall correct. from 19 to 27. Correct, 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 correct. correct. So this and, past makes sense. Did you understand why it is yes. coming from the past? Yes, yes. Because moon is holding the information. Moon will say it is present, future or past. That means the person's middle part, which means three years, four months, when Virgo is active, coming Virgo. from the future, or whatever actions they are doing is going to have an influence in the future, which means... If in the moon Mahadasha, in the middle three years, four months, I'm making investments. If I'm putting some money in systematic investment planning, like in mutual uh, funds, something, which will give me some result in the future. Oh, I see. Or if I'm doing some karma, it will come and give me the results in the future. I'm investing. Okay. I'm in an investment mode. So investments during the middle part of the moon Mahadasha will be more favorable for them. Or the people who will come will help them even in the future or will have, like you will meet somebody on a train during yeah. that phase, three years, four months. Yeah. Yes. Maybe in the future they will, you know, call you some after one, five, ten years and they'll say, hey, I saw your picture on Facebook and I remembered you. Oh, you are actually in Germany. I was coming to Germany. Can we meet up? <laughs> so somewhere the in the Okay. But this has to be studied because, you know, this is how the impulses are. Makes sense. So, do we know whether the partner or the business partner has something to do with you from the past? Mm. Or will have something to do with you in the future or in the present? It can be seen from the Dasha. This is how the Navatara systems. Okay. 
clear makes sense yes yes okay so we can then call we can go to the next part but if you have any questions now babajit on behalf of your uh, you know viewership also i am very happy to answer anything have you understand the three layers that we are yes. talking about yes. to go to this dasha system yes 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 so for the viewers i can understand what uh, you can you reiterate if you feel like if you want to just yeah, i know you have a very beautiful way of trying to maybe i am not such articulate but if you have understood you quickly have yeah you have done it very uh, beautifully but because if many viewers would be new new in the sense like you know you might exactly be, you might be knowing astrology but you may have some difficulty with finding which nakshatra spada lies in which zodiac sign that is where the most challenge can come <laughs> so then you have to go and see like you can go to my astrology basics playlist you know there you will find information on nakshatras so for example like kritika first pada is in aries then second third fourth is in taurus for example so that's how you will know or you can look online and if you are too overwhelmed then don't worry you can uh, take a pen paper write down <laughs> <laughs> so as we discussed just now so that's how you do it. it's like a it's like maths you know the more you learn and the more you practice the more you learn the more you understand the more you can uh internalize it okay so uh, please uh make it down uh, make write write notes make notes and write it down in a piece of paper and i think if we see the examples so, now it will be further more clear i'm sure about it <laughs> yes Yes, Babajit. So, I think we can do the. We can start with the next part, or uh, we can start with the examples. Yes, yes. So, yes. thank you for joining. And now, later, you will see the part two, which will continue now. So, please stay tuned for the examples.